Siempre que te pregunto que cuándo, cómo y dónde, tú siempre me respondes. Quizás, quizás, quizás. <laughs> welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you've been to this place, then you probably already know where I'm at. And uh, if you've really been here, you probably already know what time of day it is. This is Vung Tau, Vietnam, and we are on Back Beach at just about six o'clock in the morning. And these dancing ladies are out here without fail every single morning. Every single morning I've been here, I've seen them. And uh, today they are in their full glory with these, uh, I don't know what you would call those, salsa dresses. They all look like the, uh, the emoji of the salsa girl in the red dress. And today, <laughs> they've got some company, the uh, purple and white ladies. I've never seen them here before. They, are, uh, they seem to be having quite a bit of fun though. <laughs> Xin chào, chào boy sang. Chào boy sang. Good morning Vietnam. Vietnam. <laughs> Hello, chào boy sang. Very cute. Los Angeles, California. But now, Toy uh, Lanoi, Saigon. Yeah, so let me address the title. The Vietnamese hate the sun, but, <laughs> but love the beach. And uh, this is why the beach is so festive at six in the morning. I've been out here since about quarter after five. I walked all the way down the beach from my hotel as I do just about every morning in Vung Tau. And uh, this is pretty much what it looks like almost all year round. Although right now it is, uh, you know, being September, it seems to be like the summer holiday month. It seems to be a little more populated than than usual and <clears throat> I'd like you to picture like a uh, Venn diagram and um, as my way of explaining why the beach is so populated at 6 in the morning it'll be completely vacant at noon aside for uh, couple of the uh, vendors trying to rent beach chairs, um, a few motorbikes ripping up and down the beach. But this crowd will be gone. And I wish I had a, uh, a long lens to really do it justice so you could see exactly how populated the beach and the water are. But uh, I don't know if you can kind of make it out. There are about a hundred people in my field of vision out in the water. And um, I'd say a good uh, couple of thousand on Back Beach here. Um, and so if you imagine a uh, Venn diagram of the population and activity here, with one of the uh, Venn diagram circles being the Vietnamese culture and their aversion to the sun. Uh, the reason for that being largely uh, like cultural status. If you're um, tan, it means that um, you have a job outside, like a manual labor job. And if you're light skinned and look like, uh, look like a K-pop, smooth white skinned K-pop star, it suggests that you have a 
higher socioeconomic status and a job indoors. That's the same reason that if you've, uh, if you've been here and seen some Vietnamese men with the long pinky fingernail, they may also have a cocaine addiction, but, but primarily that's to uh, indicate that they don't do manual labor. You'll see a lot of men with those long fingernails and they're just trying to show off that they are, uh, have a higher socioeconomic status. Which is, it's funny to me because I see these people working so hard to try to act wealthier than one another, but they're all basically poor to me. You know, I mean, the average income here in this country is like $300 a month. So unless you're like a uh, really corrupt politician or um, corrupt <laughs> uh, banking president, <clears throat> There's a woman that recently stole $12 billion from the banking system here. Some of the really corrupt people have a lot of money here. But uh, other than that, everyone is kind of, everyone seem, will seem kind of like poor to you here. So it's funny to me that um, someone that makes $600 a month <clears throat> wants to act holier than now with their light skin uh, over the person that makes $300 a month. <clears throat> that's always seems a little strange to me. In any case, that's what the aversion to the sun is all about. So if you look at the whole Vietnamese population in that one Venn diagram circle, they all want to avoid the sun. When the sun comes up in about an hour, uh, after people have finished watching the sunrise, they scatter like cockroaches. The other component to the Venn diagram would be uh, this, the elder Vietnamese culture really seems to like exercise. I've never seen a uh, population of a country, the elder generation, that likes to exercise so much. And if you see me do the videos in Saigon, Da Nang, even in um, Thailand and Cambodia, see a lot of the old people up at this hour uh, doing exercise in those groups, like you saw the um, ladies in the purple and white. You see a lot of that here, particularly in Vietnam. Large groups of old people that are uh, devoutly committed to their exercise routine early in the morning. Uh, and then the third part of the Venn diagram, the third circle, would be this location. This location lending itself to uh, outdoor exercise. This very, very long beach, back beach here in Vung Tau. And the uh, flat, wide roads that are not congested with motorbikes. <clears throat> On the main drag here along Back Beach at starting at like 4.30 in the morning, you'll see a huge population of uh, cyclists, road bikers. Again, a lot of older people, middle-aged to older people riding bicycles uh, because this location lends itself to outdoor exercise, the long beach, the flat roads, and the uh, mild climate and, and the nice air. A lot of breeze here. The air quality is really nice. So Mung Tao at this hour is where those three Venn diagram circles would intersect. The population that avoids the sun the elder generation that loves exercise in big groups and the, the geography, this location lending itself to outdoor exercise. They all intersect 
here on the beach at, well, really from like 4.30 until about 7 a.m. And uh, it's quite a place. One of my favorite places that I've discovered in the world. This hour on this beach in Vung Tau. There are uh, similar places in Vietnam. Da Nang, for instance, and Nha Trang. <clears throat> da Nang is, uh, is cool. If none of you have been to Vietnam, you're looking for cities to visit. That is one that I would suggest. A fairly modern city. It's got a uh, decent population of expats, digital nomads, and some great geography, topography. There's uh, mountains by the sea, really great seafood. Natrang, not so much. Too many Russian people there for my taste. A lot of expats that I know, Western expats <clears throat> and Vietnamese have uh, started to avoid Natrang because of the influx of Russians who, are, who have fled the war. Russians seem to be uh, taking over many of the beaches. I know um, myself and a lot of other expats are done with uh, Phuket, for instance. <clears throat> Very few friends I know that have been to Phuket want to ever return because it's become like little Moscow by the sea. And um, to a much smaller extent, you'll see a Russian population here in Vung Tau. But um, most times of the year, you can really have this place to yourself. This is a, uh, I guess, fairly crowded version of Vung Tau. Although um, I rented a homestay, like a two bedroom condo at this building, the song. I did a video on the song before where I was able to book a room for $11 a night. I got it for $9 a night. Modern building, a um, fairly new condo. I think the building went up like four years, four or five years ago. Infinity pool on the roof, a gym, a sauna, and a one minute walk from this beach. Nine dollars a night. I couldn't believe it. So uh, Vung Tau is a is a pretty good choice to visit if you're, I'd say if you're already in Saigon. I wouldn't suggest anyone fly to Vietnam just to come to Vung Tau. But if you um, plan to visit Saigon and want to see a Vietnamese beach, it's a quick and easy trip, two hours from the city. And uh, that reminds me, I should give a shout out to my friend Henry at Giant Ebus Transport on Pham Nu Lao in the backpacker district of Ho Chi Minh City. Henry uh, gave me a pair of bus tickets out here. Thank you, Henry. Messi is his nickname, if you're gonna go and see Henry <clears throat> in the uh, backpacker district. And uh, Henry's it can take care of just about anything for you if you're visiting Saigon, uh, bus trips around Vietnam or to Cambodia and back, visa runs, motorbike rentals, the riverboat cruises, uh, tours of the Coochie Tunnels in Mekong Delta, and money exchange. If you have like a lot of money like bands of USD, a stack of $100, uh, $100 bills. <clears throat> Henry's got the money counter and enough Vietnamese dong to uh, swap out for you. So again, go see Henry at Giant Ebus Transport for anything tourism or fixer related in Ho Chi Minh City. Um, what else? Well, you know, I was thinking today, I'm working on these TV shows for my, uh, my regular job, 
And uh, we have got one show about influencers, political influencers on TikTok and uh, Instagram. And uh, one of them was ranting about pronouns. He's a, a gay conservative dude. He's like ranting about, uh, he doesn't respect pronouns or use pronouns. Uh, anyway, I got me thinking, you know, they don't, they don't have that here. One of the things I love about being in this part of the world is that uh, all that crap that the radical left came up with in the United States in the last four years that just doesn't, doesn't exist here. So uh, if you want a, a pronoun and Russian free vacation, come to Vung Tau, Vietnam. I'll be here to greet you. I'll see you in the next video.